question. Um, I think uh, encephalitis is a, a very misunderstood uh, condition uh, in many communities and, and one that we wanted to explore a little bit more were emergency medical professionals. So we, we conducted a survey and what we found was that more than half 53% didn't consider infectious encephalitis when presented with an accepted list of the symptoms from the literature. And even more, four in five or 78% did not consider an autoimmune encephalitis as a diagnosis when presented again with an accepted list of symptoms um, for the presentation. So we decided to ask people a little bit more. We wanted to dig a little bit more as to why that was. And, and around about a third of people, um, emergency medical professionals, when they were surveyed, they strongly agreed that their training had given them the confidence to recognise uh, encephalitis. But what was interesting was almost all respondents, so 85%, um, somewhat or strongly agreed that they would benefit from more training on encephalitis. And, and at Encephalitis International, that's very much been our experience. We're a 30-year-old organisation. We know that um, uh, recognition of this condition, uh, and in particular diagnosis and thus treatment, um, is so important for the people that are affected by this condition. It has a high mortality rate in comparison to many other neurological conditions, depending on the cause. Um, and of course, people that are affected and who survive the condition are, are often left with, with life changing disabilities as a result of the injury to the brain. Of course, some will make a, a good recovery, um, but, but many don't. So we felt that this was an important area to explore. Um, I, I think probably several different layers need to take place. I think we we need to encourage um, uh, countries um, and their own particular medical training to spend a little bit more time on encephalitis in their training modules. Um, I think that there is more focus in many countries in, on meningitis, for example, sepsis. What we need is this condition to be at the forefront of people's minds in the same ways that things like meningitis and sepsis are, but it, but it often isn't. So I, I think encouraging um, more training, of course, that globally isn't necessarily going to fix all of the problems. So we are currently working with global stakeholders such as the World Health Organization um, to look at what needs to be done for greater policy change. So we're, we're working with the WHO at the moment on a, a something called a technical briefing that should be able to inform policy change um, around the world. Um, and then, of course, you know, if we look at, say, for example, some of the low to middle income countries, there's lots of difficulties there. Uh, some of these countries, uh, taking some countries in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, don't have any in-country neurologists. That's a huge problem. Um, and training in those countries um, is often uh, not as good as it could be, um, along with lots of other problems, of course, such as not having access to the right diagnostic equipment. And even if they did, perhaps not even having um, the drugs uh, necessary to to treat uh, some of the difficulties presented by this condition. So I think it's a multi-layered problem. Um, and at Encephalitis International, one of the things that we pledged uh, this World Encephalitis Day, which was on the 22nd of February, is that we want to be working towards providing health and medical professionals with globally accessible training on this condition, which will be free at source. And so we're going to be developing that, uh, investigating platforms and developing that over the over the next 18 months. The um, Encephalitis International is, is very lucky. We have a, a very strong scientific advisory panel um, that inform uh, a lot of the work that we do um, and everything that comes through our organisation is, is evidence-based and, and peer-reviewed. So we're lucky to have a, a great amount of support in achieving um, that objective. Um, and of course, if people are interested in uh, being able to access this uh, training, along with lots of other resources that we have for neurology professionals, they can do that by signing up for the free membership on the encephalitis.info website. Um, and then they will be able to keep up to date with any opportunities that we are providing, such as grants, bursaries, seed funding, as well as this uh, fantastic training when we're in a position to roll it out.